All right, for today's project at hand, we're going to talk about HVLP guns. I really like using the Cheap Harbor Freight when it's on sale, $10. Normally, it's probably $20, but I like this. It works well for what I need it to do, uh, small to medium production, not assembly line stuff, but it does give a nice spray. I like to use it using my lacquer. I've been having issues, well it doesn't do well with uh, latex paint and that's because of the tip. It comes with a 1.4 millimeter tip which isn't big enough for latex paint. You really need something about two, um, two millimeters or bigger. So that's what we're going to work on today is can we turn a 1.4 into a two millimeter. Now this is for uh, my spray and lacquer so I don't want to damage that but I did find an old husky one that's very similar. Uh, so we're going to use that as our project gun. So the internal components of this one is very similar to the uh, Harbor Freight one, which I think pretty much it's a knockoff, but they're pretty much all about the same. So we take off the nozzle there. That's to distribute the air. And then we need to use our key here to take off the nozzle, what we want to get to. Let's see, here you go. Now I think this one is 1.4 just like the other one. It's made of metal and that's the part that we need to make into two millimeters. Now the wall's thin here so we got to be careful we're not going to be able to go too far out uh, take too big of a hole because uh, we'll just lose that fine little tip right there. Now if anyone knows can source for me these tips pre-made 2.0 that fit the Harbor Freight gun, I would like to know. I haven't been able to find any. Harbor Freight supposedly has them, but I haven't been able to find them or order them anything. So, we'll get the caliper out here. I've already got it set to 1.92 millimeter. And I think that's about what a 564ths is. So, we'll take a measurement. Yeah, that's pretty tight. It says close. Let's go up to the next size up, which is 3 30 seconds. And that's 2.3, that's millimeters, that's a little bigger than what we want. Let's go down to the three, uh, 5 64ths, let's try that first. So we got our drill with our 5 64th drill bit in there. We're going to take the end here, I, wish, I don't know the exact names of these things, but this is where that distributes the air. We're going to have to go this way here with it. Go real slow. And then once you get the hole made, you can go a little faster. Now I'm going to make it just a little bit wider. Since it was under 2.0. That should do it. The wall is thin right there on the tip, like I said, so you can't take out too much. But we did make it a lot wider. Let me see if I can get the other one out. So that is a bigger difference between 1.4, which is here, and now our new 2.0 which is here. So hopefully that will be enough to get latex paint to run through it. Let's put it back together and give it a try. So for today's flavor choice we're going to be using, uh, let's see, this is a uh, PPG paint. It says Skiff Red. So this is the paint we used when we built our seven and a half foot dinghy. Uh, this is the red, so let's go ahead and we'll use that as our test paint. Don't know what it, the condition of it is. It says 2019, so it's been a while. It's a little bit rusted on there. can's completely rusted. Look at that. That's the lip of it right there. I don't know. We're going to have to do something with this paint afterwards. Let's 
go ahead and get our paint into our sample container. Now I don't have a filter in there because I don't want any restriction with this paint. And we're going to leave a little bit of room to ooh, there's trash in here. What I think I'll do first before we thin it out, let's just do it without thinning it and see what happens and then we'll come back, we'll thin it and see if that helps or if we need even need it. So, did want to show you before we go to the paint booth. This is the compressor I am using for uh air. Now, you're not going to be able to do long amounts of spraying, um but for me this has worked. This is a 27 gallon Fortress from Harbor Freight. It goes up to 200 psi. So, um everything I've done, I get plenty of pressure. Uh, I don't really have a problem with it cycling. Um, or running out of uh, pressure, but I'm not also doing production like all day long um, painting. So for for what I use it for, to small to medium runs uh, projects, this is perfect. Just wanted to show you, I like to add an inline uh, filter, and then I like to, since the compressor is in the other room, I want to check the pressure right here at the gun. That way I can make any adjustments that I need to uh, rather than having to go back and forth, back and forth, changing it on the compressor. So I just turn the compressor all the way up to like 100 PSI, and then I control it uh, here at the gun. I start about 40 PSI, and that's with pulling the trigger halfway, so it's getting some flow, set it to 40, because it will probably rise up to about 60 or so when you have it off. But when you let go is when the pressure starts going, and that's the pressure you need. So we'll go ahead and hook up. We're right now at uh, 55, pull it halfway, it's going down to about 25. So right now the pressure is like at 55. You got, when I do it halfway, it's not spraying any paint, but it's letting the air out and we're only at 20. So we're gonna uh, increase it. I think I need to increase a little bit more on the compressor. It's not out at 100, because uh, it's not getting above 25 here. So let me change that real quick and then we'll get back to it. Yeah, the compressor was set at 60, so that's not enough. I put it up to 100. Now, we're at 60 now. I'm gonna turn it down. It's about 40, it's 40 PSI. Uh, the paint, uh, the amount of flow, I, I set it to pretty wide open, so as back as far as I can, and then I bring it in just a little bit. And for the fan, we're going to do it all the way open and then bring it back to about 90% or so. We'll try we'll try the settings there and then go go from there and see how it looks. All right, so I'm not getting very much paint out. I've got the feed rate pretty much all the way open. Just a few threads in. Let's try it again. So definitely not enough. We've got to thin this. Let's go ahead and thin it, and then uh, we'll try again. So you can see what I just shot. Uh, there's not enough paint. I think one side is getting more air than the other. You see there's not much paint over here. Uh, so that means that it's not getting enough air pressure. So let's thin it out, and uh, let, let me clean the tip a little bit and see if that'll help some. So this is latex paint, so you can thin it by either using water, or I like to use Floetrol um, by Flood. And uh, what it does is helps thins it out, but it also helps uh, when it's uh, brushed on, it smooths the brush marks out. So I like to use this a little bit. It only takes, I think, uh, four ounces per gallon, so it doesn't take much. Where's the instructions here? Yeah, four to eight ounces into each quart of paint. So four to, so you can put a good amount, four to eight ounces per quart. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and dump this out. We're gonna dump it into our paint container. There's not much in that from that cup, so we're just gonna put a little bit. I haven't really noticed it changing 
the color of the paint. So that's never been an issue with changing the uh, tone of it. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. So now we'll just add it back into our cup. Just be good there. Put our lid on. I like to use this uh, for cleaning smaller areas. This is for carb cleaning. Comes with a file and a bunch of different size tips. So this is really good to help uh, cleaning different types of ports, just not even uh, carbs. Just want to make sure that the holes are clear. And make sure we're getting good airflow. And that should do it. Let's put it back together and oh, there you go. There's our constriction. I don't know if you can see it. It had some green paint left over. There you go. Right there. I don't know if you can see it. That was probably holding up the airflow for that one side. So that will definitely give us a better control. And that was the side that was blocked. So there you go. So definitely keen to have one of these on hand when you're cleaning. So we'll install the tip back on and we'll head back to the paint booth. That's much better. You can see I've got a nice pattern. Uh, the fans even uh, instead of here where it was more paint on one side than the other but it's not coming out as much as I would like uh, probably need to turn I'm going to play with the pressure maybe turn it turn the pressure up just a little bit and see how that works but it's definitely uh, flowing a lot better than it was before So I'm getting a good flow coming out, but I'm getting a lot of splattering. So I'm just trying to adjust the settings and trying to reduce the splattering amount. That might be too much paint coming through the, the, uh, uh, the flow. So we might want to reduce that a little bit, but it's definitely working. So I'll go ahead and flip this over so I can have better reach. But basically I am getting a good spray pattern. It's just, it's just splattering. So that means the paint's still a little too thick. But it's definitely painting. So um, let's go add a little bit more Floetrol and thin it down a little bit more and uh, see if that helps any. But this is definitely a good start for those medium projects where you got to do a lot of spraying. So I've got the Floetrol mixed to about one part Floetrol to three parts paint so that's probably about the max that you want to uh, uh, dilute it but we're going to give it a try so I'm still getting uh, that splattering so definitely is a little thicker we probably need a little bit bigger uh, diameter possibly uh, tip uh, but it is flowing somewhat smooth let's take a look so you can see here you do have some splattering if you can see it's kind of hard to pick up but it is consistent so you could get a halfway decent paint job on here definitely not as perfect as an airless sprayer but right now those are so big and they take up the hose takes up so much paint for smaller jobs it's really not worth pulling that out to paint so use an HVLP gun to do latex paint it works it would be good for smaller and medium sized projects now if you're doing a lot lot of different items then I would suggest going to a uh, probably airless sprayer you're gonna get a lot more uh, is a lot more consistency and it's made to push it the problem is is you got the air trying to push the uh, thick paint and maybe if we thin it out a little bit more, we could get it to uh, go on without sp uh, splattering. 
But right now, the splattering does have little drawbacks to it. Now, uh, if you're looking just to paint something and get paint on there for protection, uh, this would be fine. If you're trying to do cabinetry, something really fine that you want a nice, smooth finish, then possibly you might want to look at a different route. But I'm pretty happy with the success that we had with HVLP, and it, it adds to our arsenal of different ways to uh, paint items. If you have a suggestion about how you paint latex paint and which do you think the best way uh, to do that is and the easiest for smaller to medium sized projects so you don't have a lot of cleanup, put your comments in the comment section down below. And until next time, we'll see you then. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.